Welcome to Akbar Academy. Today we are going to look at May June 2012, Paper 3, Variant 2, Question Number 11. Today's topic is going to be half life, background radiation, alpha particles, and gamma rays. The purpose of this video is not only to go over the question, but to strike the right balance with giving you some background knowledge as well without completely going off topic. So without further ado, let's get stuck right in. In a research laboratory, a radioactive sample is placed close to a radiation detector. The graph in figure 11.1 shows the decay of the sample. So on the y-axis, we've got counts per minute. And on the x-axis, we've got time, per day, time in days. So what's going on here? If you were to imagine that my Apple Pen here is a radioactive source, so some sort of, let's pretend, metal that gives out either alpha, beta, or gamma radiation. What's happening is it's decaying over a period of time. In other words, it's becoming less and less radioactive, more and more stable, safer, if you like. So if we look at this, it appears to start from 52, and then round about eight, nine, 10 minutes, it kind of fluctuates between 13 and 15. How do I know? Well, if I look at the graph between 50 and 60, there is one, two, three, four, five boxes, and the difference is 10. So if I do 10 divided by five, that tells me each box is worth two. On the x-axis, let's just take between zero and one day. Again, there's five boxes. The difference between zero and one is one. And if I've got five boxes, one divided by five tells me on the x-axis that each box is worth 0 0.2 days. So 52, and then round about here, you know, looking at nine days, it looks like it's a box and a half above 10. So it's 13. Looking at 10 days, it looks like it's two and a half boxes above uh, 10. So it's 15. So let's go to the first question. After six days, the count rate hardly decreases and in fact increases a little at times. Explain these observations. When the decay seems to peter out, if you like, and it becomes roughly consistent, we've reached what we call background radiation. And as the name suggests, it's radiation in the background, such as radiation coming from cosmic rays from the sun, radon gas naturally present in the atmosphere, um, radioactive rocks in the Earth's crust. These are all there, they're natural, they give rise to background radiation. Mark schemes nowadays will also accept things like nuclear disasters, hospitals because of X-ray departments, etc. These are lower level answers, but the point is background radiation is always there. Even where you are right now, there is background radiation. So why does it go up and down a little? Because radioactive decay is random. It fluctuates slightly. Whilst this curve looks really smooth, in reality, I'll just scribble on it right now, it would kind of do this, kind of fluctuate up and down. I mean, that's exaggerated somewhat, but that's basically what it would be doing. But we kind of draw this nice smooth curve for simplicity. So what is the answer to the first part of the question? Well, basically, I'm going to write down the main points. And you don't need to write it exactly as I do, as long as your answer contains those points. So what are those points? <clears throat> it's background radiation that causes this. So background radiation. And the radioactive decay. is random. All right. The other kind of question you would get 
when it comes to Half-Life is where there is but no background or where background has been accounted for. Now, when I say there is no background, it's basically the examiner's way of simplifying the question itself. Next, now I chose this example because it really hits home an important point about Half-Life. Use the graph to determine the half-life of the sample, explain your working carefully. Now, the student who's going to make a mistake is going to quite simply do 52 divided by two to get 26. They're going to go down to 26. They're going to go all the way across and they'll go to about 2.6 days. It's wrong. That would be correct if this graph had accounted for background, in other words, no background radiation was present. The fact is, background radiation is present. So you are looking at me right now. I want you to imagine the camera that I'm looking at is my radioactive detector, and this is my radioactive sample. The detector, the camera, is picking up the sample and the room that I am in. So what you've got to do is take account of the room that I am in. So if you remember at the beginning, I kind of said background ranged from about 13 to 15. Which one do you choose? Either. I'm going to choose 15. It seems nice and easy for me. So I will do 52 minus 15, which will give me 37. Now remember, I want to find the half-life of this source. So what I've got to do is I've got to do 37 divided by 2, which gives me 18.5. But for simplicity, we'll round it to 19. All right, so when this halves for the first time, it'll be 19. Now, before you go rushing off, well, let me find 19 and go all the way across. It's roughly 18, there's 19 there. And find that it's approximately four days. That would also be wrong. Closer. You'll get marks, but not quite. Because remember, the video that's looking at me right now, the camera that's looking at me right now, will detect this and the room. So remember, half of 37 was 18.5. Let's call it 19. I've got to add the background back on. I've got to add the 15 back on. In other words, it's 34. So let me just try to do this neatly. 34, and then when I come down from 34, I get 1.4 days. I will write all of this down, but I get 1.4 days. The mark scheme says between 1.2 and 1.8. So you can see that I'm almost in the middle, but that's how you do it. Okay, I will recap this right now. So remember, we start, the graph tells us the beginning count rate is 52. But remember, I've chosen 15 of that as background. So it gives me 37. So I want to find the half-life of the sample. So 37 divided by 2 is 18.5. For simplicity, we're going to round that to 19. So remember, I've got to add the 15 back on to the 19, which gives me 34. And then how many days was that? It was 1.4 days. Okay. Moving on to the last part. Another radioactive sample is a strong emitter of alpha particles and gamma rays. A junior researcher suggests that a sufficient safety precaution when working with this sample would be to hold the sample with long forceps. Think of them like kind of long scissors or long tweezers, if you like. Okay. Explain why this suggestion, although helpful, may be insufficient. Now, when I say scissors, by the way, I don't mean it will cut it. I just mean the length. So what they're asking for, they're saying that this is a helpful thing to do, but it might not be enough. Why? Well, to answer this, you've got to know a bit about alpha particles and gamma rays. Alpha is the most ionizing radiation and consequently doesn't travel very far. 
it won't even travel more than six centimeters in air and would be stopped by a thin piece of paper. Gamma rays, on the other hand, they're least ionizing, but they are very penetrating. I mean, you would need really thick lead and concrete in order to stop gamma rays. So why is it helpful with the long forceps? Alpha particles won't reach the researcher, but the gamma rays will. Okay, so alpha particles won't reach researcher. Gamma rays will as they are penetrating. Okay, that's the gist of it. So I hope you found that useful. Look out for more videos. Thank you very much.